welcome to this week's piece. So this is that sweet little cabinet that I picked up in Portland. It's not of substantial quality. It is just made of plywood, which is fine. It's still super cute. It's very sturdy, but as you can see, it's missing some edge banding. It has some loose trim. The paint job, I don't actually know what the paint job is. It was kind of like a green with maybe a gold glaze over it. And then there's quite a bit of damage on the top. So that will have to be assessed. And as far as the actual functionality of it, the doors work great and the shelf is also in good condition. So we're just going to get started as we do. And as we go along cleaning and prepping and all that, we'll kind of figure out all the repairs that need to be made. Oh, I'm so excited about this. This was the first time I ever used my new sander. And this really isn't the best piece to decide whether or not this was worth all the money. But I will tell you that in vibration alone, this sander is incredible. It is so, so smooth. I couldn't have been happier with that aspect of it. There was no weird tinglies in my hand. Mind you, this, like I said, isn't the best piece to Kind of figure out how amazing the sander is because i'm not going through a ton of the finish and the pad is quite a bit larger this is a six inch instead of a five inch so of course it goes through things a bit quicker than a regular five inch sander which is what my normal orbitals are but it did take some getting used to i had to determine uh the speed that would work best for me so that was a little finicky and my speed did change depending on the grit of sandpaper I was using. But once I got it down, it was so, so smooth. And it does make a difference. Just adjusting the speed and having that kind of control over it was a huge, huge deal. But yeah, it, I mean, it took care of some stuff pretty quickly. But like I said, this isn't like that oak piece where I really had to get down and get through some material here. I didn't want to do that on this piece because it's plywood and I didn't want to get through any plies. So anyways, thus far, I love it. But again, this is not the ultimate test. Now, initially I didn't think these knobs were original to the piece, but I now upon further inspection believe that they are. They match the hinges perfectly. So unless they swapped out the hinges, which is entirely unlikely, uh, these are the original knobs. And since I'm going to do a scene on the front, they will get painted into the piece. So for these little appliques, I will obviously be saving them for a later use. I need a flat surface to be able to paint on. And these were actually just kind of hollowed out resin situations. So not carved wood or anything. I'm just using a chisel to kind of break these off. They were done in glue. They are a little bit brittle, just I think because of the age and the material. So I broke one of them, but all the rest were fine. And the one can be glued back together for whatever future use it will have. Now that the front's all cleared off, I can go ahead and continue giving this piece a scuff sand. This paint finish was actually adhered really well. There were no pieces chipping off or anything, so I'm not worried about how well the finish is going to stay on. Again, I'm just assessing everything, figuring out what all I need to do. Right here, I'm just fixing the trim pieces. And I'm using that with my little nail punches and making sure those are set below the surface so that when I go through and fill everything, they're recessed in.
Now, this is just an Elmer Stainable Paintable Wood Filler. It is not the strongest wood filler I have. Um, if I want something stronger, I'll go with Durham's or um, an epoxy or something like that. This is literally just to fill in the little pin nail holes and to kind of smooth out the edges here in the plywood because this part, again, doesn't have the banding. So I'm kind of just getting it in the grain so that when I go back through and sand, it's filled out. I would not bulk anything up with this stuff. A lot of times you'll see me raise it a bit higher and then sand it down lower. But if I want something that's going to be really, really strong, like if I was doing a corner of something, I definitely wouldn't use this particular product, but it is great for filling grain and small holes that are going to be recessed and things like that. Well, this corner still had all the edge banding. It just needed to be re-glued. So that's all I'm doing here, getting it in. Make sure I have squeezed out on all the sides. I'm cleaning it off and then I'll just use some tape to secure it down and leave it overnight. This back trim piece was really thin and brittle and I didn't want to risk breaking it by removing it. So I just opted to hand sand and use a few tools to clean up the paint and the crease there. It's a soft wood, so getting the sander anywhere near it kind of left divots and things. So I'm trying to smooth any of those out where I accidentally bumped it with the sander and then also cleaning up any paint that was on there. All right, I'm just busting into some thoughts here. So initially, I was going to try and bring this back to wood because I like a good wood top. Um, I was fine with the grain. It's not the best, it's not the worst. However, it is plywood, so I wasn't expecting, you know, high quality. But I was hoping for better than I'm getting. The green paint has gone into the grain and it's not paint that I can pick out. So that's frustrating. If I keep sanding down to get it out because some parts have gone out and some parts haven't, um, I'm worried that I'm gonna blow through and get somewhere in the wood that just won't be great anyways. So I think I'm gonna paint this. Um, there's a knot here on the other end there. There's some stuff going on, lots of cracks and fills and kind of weird wonky stuff so I'm a little bummed just because like I said I wanted to kind of get a wood top going but that's fine sometimes it happens now I'm going to give this a second clean since I've got sanding dust all over it to prep for the paint and the front section I'm going in with Pebble Beach this is just going to give me a base to start the painting with um, I'm just going on the front. I know this isn't going to be my final coat. Just when I start with a light base, it's easy for me to paint the skies in. And then if I know that I'm going to end up using water, and sometimes I don't know that I'm going to end up using water, I just assume because I really like putting water in things, that I can start blending stuff in. And so here's a stack of paint that I kind of started with. And then I added to it as I went, as I decided I needed other shades or anything else and then those two pictures there were kind of a couple that inspired me so i kind of had those going in the background now to do skies they're one of my most favorite things because they're beautiful one and incredibly easy so like i said i started out with the light paint and then i just take a blue and I literally blend it in. I typically start darker on top and it'll fade lighter into the rest of it. And it fades down and then I will do that kind of in reverse at the bottom to mirror, like I said, if I end up using water. And then to do clouds, I just do little swirls with the white and I don't ever have a ton of paint on my brush. It's just a very small amount. And I just swirl them in everywhere. You almost leave the top hard and then you blend out the bottom. I wasn't sure where I was going with the background of this. I was just kind of hoping for the best, which a lot of times is what happens if I don't have something to fully follow along with. I feel like my imagination isn't good enough yet to 
be able to come up with stuff on my own. And so it helps me to have some inspiration to work off of. Now, I love these kind of background trees. I think that they work really well. But in this case, I wish, really, really, I wish I would have put a mountain in the center and then did the trees over the top because I do feel like a mountain never hurt anybody. And here is where I started just super, super doubting myself. So I was trying to put in this like background castle situation. Now after seeing it in person and watching the video and doing the voiceover, I think I just should have done it kind of hazier and lighter, if that makes sense. I think it's just a little bit too harsh in the end result. I like it a little more and more the more it kind of sits with me, but I think in the future if I wanted to do something like this, I'd like to go a lot lighter. Again, I'm not good at like these man-made things. My first one was the pirate ship, if you've seen that one. It's uh, a twin bed that I did like a seascape on and a pirate ship. And I think it's fine, but I think that they look more like illustrations rather than the fun landscapes that I do. I think nature is much easier for me to paint than things that are man-made. So this was hard for me. It does look better and better the more layers that you get to it, the more shadows and lights and all those things. But realistically, I'm just gonna need a ton more practice to be able to get these done. And I also think it's hard for me because the landscapes are so fast. You guys, you just like blob paint down and then it just, looks like something in the end and it's lovely but when you're doing these structures and things it needs so much more and so it takes i believe so much longer and that's where i go wrong is that i just assume that it's going to be as fast as doing the landscapes when in reality i think i need to spend quite a bit more time on it and add just a ton more colors and texture and things like that so i think that'll be something that i'll be working on in the future This bridge, again, man-made situation, and I struggled with it so hard. But in the end, I really ended up liking the bridge. So I'm at least happy about that. I think the bridge ended up being a win. But for the longest time I was staring at it, I just kind of like left it alone because I didn't know. And this piece took me a while. I think I was just, I was very upset about how much snow I had. <laughs> and still have if we're being honest. And I couldn't get this right and I was just very frustrated with the whole thing. And so I literally would like leave this for days. That's why there's been so many days in between my last painted piece and this one because I was, I was just getting frustrated. I will say that I did really, really enjoy doing like larger, more detailed flowers in this painting. I've never done that before. And I thought that was really, really fun. So I think I'm gonna try doing more florals because I love florals in general, but I usually just paint them into things instead of 
me painting the specific flowers. So yeah, this was fun. I liked doing the flowers. They made me happy. And I was really pleased with how they turned out in the end. So I was, I was fine with those. And then I just decided to go an all over blue, which is the same color I started with the sky and I did that all the way around the piece. And then I felt like it kind of pulled everything together. And then because I can't have, you know, anything just normal, I did a little bit of dry brushing with the pink just because the bottom didn't have as much blue as the top. And so I wanted to kind of mellow out those colors and make them, make it sit a little better. And then I was like, ooh, even the dry brushing is not enough. So I used the same pink as with all the flowers and I added a stencil to the very bottom section and the sides. And when I did the stencil, I did it very lightly. So it was also dry brushed. So you'll see harder points in the paint and softer points in the paint. And I really just liked that that looked very cottagey, kind of like the image itself. Now there wasn't a lot of bling to this piece, but I did need to add just a teeny tiny bit. So I have out my little pot that I keep my glazing dust and poly in, and I did just the trim pieces. So I did the trim pieces along the bottom and then the trim piece along the top. And I feel like it was just enough. I took one of my old pieces of sandpaper and I just went through and gave it a light, light sand around the corners just to have a tiny bit of distressing, not a ton. And then I sealed everything in with poly. I did give this one three coats and I did additional coats on the knobs because I painted those into the piece. So I like to just make sure that those have extra, extra protection because people's hands will be all over them. And I just had to show you guys how much snow. Oh, hi, Taryn and Lucas here with Elegant Upgrades and we've got our finished piece that you can't see because it's hard to move out of the way of this. Pictures to follow, like always. Um, this one was a real struggle for me. I think I'm not designed to paint man-made structures. It, I had such a hard time with it. I still don't think it's exactly right. I love trees and water and flowers and all the things. And then as soon as I tried doing something not that, I just, it's not great. So I'll probably keep practicing because that's how you get better at things. But man, it, it was a struggle for me. It was really, really difficult. And there were days where I just would look at it. And I think a lot of it too is the snow, which I just showed you guys is nonstop. We have like, five feet of it, it's higher than the hoods of our cars, but that's fine. Um, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one and uh, we'll see you next week. And go push the button. Hey, thank you, mommy.